Introducing the African Queen's documentary series by Afrobotanics. Afrobotanics was founded as a brand that would contribute to the retelling of the African story. At Afrobotanics, we have always been inspired by African warrior queens, such that our original range of hair care products for natural hair is named after a warrior queen, nine of them. We have been celebrating African queens through our Afrobotanics African Queens range since 2012. To further celebrate these African queens, Afrobotanics has worked to research, capture, and share their stories in a way that has not been done before, focusing on their leadership styles, what they stood for, and what we can learn from each of them today. We are excited about the opportunity to celebrate these strong messages by these women. They really lived out their own kind of beautiful. The untold history of Africa and its people is vast. Through our African Queen series, you will get to learn African history in a way that has not been taught in a long time, and certainly not in our modern academic curricula. These stories are about leadership, leadership lessons that are applicable to all in the world today. Leadership lessons our African leaders could espouse to build a strong, united Africa with opportunities for all. Today we continue on our journey, examining and learning from the kernels of wisdom, deep wisdom, leadership lessons from ancient African queens, queens who have been forgotten and not written about much depth in history. We look at Queen Kwamile of Swaziland, the country now known as Eswatini, that is ruled by an absolute monarch called King Mswati. Queen Kwamile's grandson. Queen Kwamile was queen regent in the early 1900s, at a time just before Swaziland became a colonial state ruled by the British Crown. She was monumental and known to be in history. They speak about her in relation to her work in ensuring that Swaziland doesn't become a colonial country, a colonized country, and also avoids being usurped into South Africa. It would have made sense for a country like Swaziland, similar to Lesotho and countries like Botswana and Namibia, or even Zambia and Zimbabwe, to be usurped and form one country uh, under South Africa, for example. But under the auspices and leadership of Kwamile, she laid the foundation for the King Sopuza II, the father to the current king, to grow and learn not to allow Swaziland to be part of an apartheid South Africa and to remain under British colonial rule rather, where there was some semblance of freedom and ability of self-determination and maintenance of being an independent Swazi people. Queen Kwamile is also famed and known to be one of those leaders in Africa who were first to fund and assist the African National Congress, the ANC, and was one of those who started and funded the first Bantu newspaper that helped to spread the philosophies and the ideas of the freedom fighters, of those who were fighting for black freedom in South Africa. Queen Guamile was known to be astute, to be smart, and to be an amazing negotiator. Even the British colonial leaders, administrators in their reports when they reported back to the UK, spoke about how smart and what a good negotiator and strategist she is. But there was more to Queen Guamile than that. As with all leaders, especially royals, who always loved to have the idea of symbolism. Queen Guamile presented herself as a woman, a queen, holding in her hand a pot carved from a tree trunk, like an emptied out coconut filled with seeds in it. Abundance of seeds. And this symbolism went also with her personal motto, and her driving philosophy, which was, what have you harvested today? And why would such a thing be a motto or a driving philosophy? 
Most of us know sayings or um, philosophies, philosophies that speak of you reap what you sow. And we care about what seeds we plant. What Guamile was always interested in is us learning from every experience. So what have you harvested was referring to what have you learned from every experience at every moment that you experienced. And so when you look at it, it's, it's about, let's say we, when you're harvesting um, a field of corn or maize, it's not only about how much seed have you been able to get of that maize or whatever cob you were able to get, but it's how have you harvested? Have you harvested neatly to the point that you're able to use uh, every part of that plant in a productive and useful way? Were you able to take you know, the husks and do something with them? Were you able to take the leaves and do something with them? Were you able to take the roots and do something with them? Were you able to take the stem and create something with them? Create something of value, even if it is a matter of creating compost to make the soil rich again. How have you harvested your seeds? Because how you harvest your seeds also speaks to the quality of seed that you have to plant again tomorrow. If you've taken part of that plant and made it into compost and nurtured the soil in which you will replant the seeds that you have, then tomorrow your harvest will even be more abundant, more nutritious, more richer. So whenever people used to come and speak to Guamile and um, as queen and ask for advice and present their problems, she always had time for them. She would always ask them to tell her the full story of what they were experiencing, what they'd gone through. And then she would walk them through so that they could see and appreciate every kernel of wisdom that they have gained. Even if a person presented to her that they have lost everything, Kwamile believed that there was never something known as a loss. Even if you came to her and you present a situation where your whole home had burned, your whole fields of, of food um, had, had burned, your livestock had been killed, she believed that through going through your story, slowly and carefully, there was wisdom that you gained. And therefore, although you had lost everything, you were not starting from nothing. That wisdom was gonna help you for your tomorrow. And that is the main lesson that she kept on teaching those that she was co-governing over, leading. And that is how she also entered all the discussions that she had, whether it was with the British or other fellow African leaders, when they were discussing how to get all of Africa out of this conundrum where uh, they were being colonized and their beingness being questioned and undermined, being enslaved. Guamile believed that everything and everyone was whole. And there is a different approach to the kind of leadership we have today. And I think the kind of leadership that grades most of us who may not understand what the point of royalty is, the paternalistic type of um, leadership that we have, whereby we treat it like subjects, we treat it as less than, we treat it as children. And that's the current situation as well as then right now, even though there is much um, being done by the current leadership of that country, the current king, um, and those that surround him and other governments, where they try to present him as someone who has some form of democratic consensus to lead. Even in times of royal royalty in the past, it mattered to royals that they were actually co-governing, not governing over, ruling over a people. So even though in our historical terms, we don't refer to royal kingdoms as being democratic in the past. There was a lot of consensus that went into being king or queen of a country. 
and it's something that we've lost and even those of us living in a democratic country like i live in south africa we really do live in a paternalistic environment a patriarchal environment what does that mean really a paternalistic environment is one where people have lost their ability in fact have given away their ability to create and be rulers of their own lives in south africa although we vote every five years for a new government in truth we are afraid to change a lot of us are no longer happy with the current government but we are afraid to change because some of us are afraid that we'll revert to an apartheid state we don't know if there's another group of governments or political parties that will do better than the current government has done a paternalistic environment or government is one to who is one to whom as a people we've given our power away to so as much as a lot of us may frown upon the idea of royalty and by the way i'm not saying that royalty and having a royal um king or queen is the way to go i'm just sharing information what we can learn but before we reject the idea entirely there are things we can learn and for me the idea of a paternalistic government the idea that we have given away so much power we think that we vote and therefore we have power but in truth we don't um, because we give away so much to the political parties that run a country as we have in south africa and as we see happening in so many countries across Africa and across the world. And that is what Queen Guamile would have us ask. She says, we should never be afraid to start over because when we start over, we're actually not starting from nothing. We have much wisdom to build from. Guamile believes that when you begin again, you are expanding your world with courage. Familia was courageous in terms of how she approached things. She reminded the people to have courage, to have heart at all times. To have strength because when a seed is planted, it doesn't wonder whether it can grow. It knows it can. And so as a people, the people of Swaziland who have been fighting for democracy for the longest time, those people can draw strength from knowing that they have the right to self-determination. The importance of going through and understanding each lesson that you've gone through, as Guamila would encourage, is that you have strength and you have enthusiasm and courage when you understand all the resources you have, harvesting everything fully. Her words to the people of Swaziland would be to have faith to beginning again and allowing for change. We have the seeds within all of us. The people of Swaziland have the seeds to start over. It is not starting from scratch. So as the people of Swaziland, Eswatini, celebrate Independence Day, their independence from colonial rule from the British, which was granted September 6, 1968. On this Tuesday, the 6th of September 2022, I find it very meaningful to sit and wonder and ponder upon the words and the philosophies of Queen Guamile. To say, what have you harvested within your life story to live your best life, to live your fullest life, to attain your God-given freedom. I think that her words around harvesting and living our full lives and the full potential of the seeds and plants that we are, are something that are worth pondering and drawing strength from. It would not be about starting over, but it would be about replanting with all the wisdom that we've gained as a people. Once again, thank you for joining me as we journey with and learn from the wisdom of another amazing African queen. 
there is much wisdom that we can learn from queens as they are leaders who understood that war is not the first option but honoring the potential and divinity and right to freedom of each individual person was most paramount something that we do not see and experience today whether we're living in a country that is ruled as a democracy or one that is ruled as an absolute monarch as the country of Eswatini. I find it meaningful to explore and ponder upon and examine the leadership nuggets by this beautiful queen. On the 6th day of September 2022, a day on which the people of Swaziland celebrate independence from the colonial rule which ended 6 September 1968. Are you really free? Have you really harvested the seeds of freedom planted by those that have gone before? And what seeds are you planting today to ensure the freedom and the ability of those coming behind you, your children, your grandchildren, to live in freedom and to live their full potential? Those are the kind of questions that I'd be asking myself, that I'm asking myself today, having learned from the great Queen Kwamile. My name is Ndomentle Katwane. I am the founder of Afrobotanics, a lover of history, a believer in humanity. Love and light and peace until we meet again to talk and ponder upon the leadership lessons of another great ancient African queen.